All right, so I finally have my ATX computer power supply hooked up to my fan on the compressor. The connections to from the power supply to the fan are done, but I wanted to temporarily run it off a of 120 without the compressor running so we can see how it works without the noise of the compressor. So yeah, here we go. Um, just I'll flip the switch on here. One, two, three. So I can feel significant air coming across here and even being sucked up into here. So I think this is exactly what I needed. So yeah, I'm confident at this point um, to go ahead and wire it into the switch. So I'll take apart this cord put it in here and I think we're good to go with them on and then we'll test the performance of it all right so still as you can see have a little tidying up to do on the wires and my connections here but I um, wanted to give this a quick test to see how well it worked compared to without the fan um, so I will fire it up it is a little warmer um, it's obviously later in the year it's a little warmer than it was before it's 84 degrees it is 64 percent humidity so in fairness a little warmer a little more water in the air um, but i believe maybe three drops came out in a single cycle so we'll go ahead and run it this time we'll check temperatures so yeah 86 so let's go ahead and run it through one cycle we'll zoom in we'll see how much water comes out and then uh we'll do the 10 minute test as well and go from there all right, here we go. Got a little bit of vibration there. That's a lot more than three or four drops for a while, but let's go ahead and measure while the temperatures are hot. All right, so compressor 255. So just running once, we're at 140, well, 205 up there. So yeah, it's so very, very hot. So very, very hot. For whatever reason, I think I said in the first video, it doesn't really show well on the copper. But anyways, down here, we're looking at 95, body, 95, C. So that still feels like room temperature. That's room temperature as well. Not even warm coming out of here. So the other day I ran it, actually touched here, fooled myself a little bit, thinking, oh, it's not very hot, and then burned the snot out of my fingers touching that one. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and run it uh, for, I think, the last time we did 10 minutes. Get oh, let's check the uh, tank. Let's see, it was empty before I ran it. A little bit of moisture in there. Nothing really came out, but uh, you could hear a little bit in there. All right, let's run it for 10 minutes and see uh, what the temps get up to.
Sorry for the noise. We're uh, we're cutting the grass, but I wanted to measure the uh, temperatures while it's still hot. So here's the head. Two two fifty basically. Found a good spot over here to measure. Anyways, I'm getting in the one forties up in here. I thought I got a higher temperature than that before. It's really hard to get the angle just right. But anyways, hitting about one forty up here. And let's go down here. The bottom. So 98, 98, well within spec. If you remember, this thing was, I think it's 160 is the max temp. We'll go back, I'll put it in. Um, I'll go back and look in the other video, but uh, well within spec. Body, tank is a little warm, 98. So definitely the fan makes a significant difference. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I'm putting my forearm right on the exit, so it is pretty much room temperature or warm to the touch. Not hot at all. So absolutely, I think the fan, especially if you live in a hot, human environment, is well worth it uh, versus the ones without the fan. It's all the water. So I didn't say earlier in the video, but it actually ran for about 12 minutes, um, so plenty of time for everything to get heat soaked. So I think this is an absolute must upgrade. You can see the amount of water that's gonna come out. So all of this would normally be in your sandblast cabinet or whatever, your paint um, or the bottom of your tank. By the way, I don't believe this is dirt from the compressor or it'll be fun to check the, the filter uh, here eventually uh, one of these days, but I'm pretty sure this is crud from sitting down on the floor. So one thing I did notice, I probably could have measured the actual water output, but it looked just maybe a little bit more than running at one cycle. So I think maybe at some point it just gets so hot, maybe some of it push, pushes into the tank. So let's see what comes out of the bottom. So still pretty significant water going in there. Um, but that's something that if you drain every day, it will help. And also I will have filters downstream as well. So before, that just used to pour water out for two minutes that I have to drain it. So before we get into this, do not take my advice on wiring any of this up. I do not know what I'm doing. Um, you can hurt yourself from an electrical perspective, killing yourself, and also messing around with these airlines. If you do it wrong, the consequences are severe. So, so I think you get the concept. Basically, when the compressor kicks on, it powers the power supply. The switch is already permanently turned on on the power supply, and that triggers the fan to come on, or that powers the fan to come on. So I leave that always turned on back there, and we're good to go. So there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to repurpose a computer power supply into a bench power supply or for something for a project. Look those up, and you don't need to see how I wired it. But basically, I took three of the 12 volt outputs and three of the grounds, put each one of those together, three of the 12 volts together, three of the grounds together, and using that, heat shrinked, connected to the fan, powering the fan. I'll clean some of this wiring up here soon. And there was not enough room, I'll show a picture here in a second, but there was not enough room to, and or post, to hook the power supply. And again, this is just a power cord from the power supply. I took it apart, separated it, and got the connections in. But I was gonna hook it into here like some do, but the there's spade terminals, as you can see here, um, instead of what I thought would be some sort of a post that I can screw on with ring terminals. So that plus the fact that it was so tight made me to kind of look into uh, the motor. So my connections are in the motor that go to the power supply. The motor kicks on, motor gets power from the switch and gives also the power supply power. I don't know if this is the right way. Let's just go ahead and say it's the wrong way, don't do it. Uh, but there was actually a little post on both of the terminals, uh, an empty uh, post for a spade connector, so I utilized that. So I, there you go, we'll go ahead and finish it up. I do want to uh, get this thing, this uh, uh, motor here is caked with you know dirt daubers and things like that, but. Having this suck in or draw in cool air 
will be also a significant help to this because right now it's just so this this room is kind of small it's maybe a six foot by four foot and it's a little bit too small for the heat that's generated here but if i can get that thing up and running it will or replaced it will help out dramatically as well so but yeah there you go i highly recommend some sort of cooler i mean i think this is exactly what i needed i did sandblast just the other day to try something I had zero issues with clogging um, and it worked beautifully okay so i'm pretty happy with the project i do have a couple of concerns number one this is just a cheap aluminum bracket that I cut up and did some very poor welding to uh, get it together and put it up on the bracket. And I'm a little concerned about long-term uh, vibrations affecting that, but we'll see, we'll go ahead and run it. Number two, there are times where this whole bracket seems to vibrate a little bit more. I don't know if this top part was also tied into the base, if that would help or it's hard to determine if the whole thing is shaking that much, if that would even help. So those are really the only two concerns that I have um, with this. Everything else turned out fantastically. Um, I've mentioned before, I may end up with a different filter for this location here. I'm not exactly sure that this is the appropriate filter, uh, but for now it's working great. You might be able to hear, I got a little bit of an air leak over there, so replace the soft hose. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped, and we'll catch you on the next one.